Hey, thanks for joining me. This is Trout Bitten. Uh, let's talk about fly fishing the mono rig and why this is casting and not lobbing. First, let me tell you, there are over 800 articles on trout bitten, um, and at least 200 of them are about the mono rig. Uh, so a lot of details there, and I will drop uh, some links to some of those important articles in the description below. But briefly, uh, the mono rig is a hybrid system for fishing nymphs on a tight line, nymphs indicator style, uh, using weighted flies, unweighted flies, uh, with with split shot and drop shot. Um, fishing streamers, both big and small, near and far, whatever you want to do. Dry dropper styles, um, even sometimes pure dries on the mono rig. So it's a long leader system that combines a fly line casting style with a tight line advantage. So let me say, this is not a competition nymphing rig. Uh, this isn't just Euro nymphing. Euro nymphing is part of it, but there's a lot more to the mono rig. Uh, the competition scene is limited by a strict set of rules that take away options and restrict versatility. Uh, but the trout bitten standard mono rig is an extremely versatile tool, um, built for using every, every, everything available, all the tools available with this leader. So this mono rig is also a leader designed for power. Um, it's designed for turnover about accuracy, not just where the fly goes, but where the tippet's gonna go behind that fly. Maybe where the dry fly is gonna go behind the fly in a tight line dry dropper rig. If we go tight line to the indie, where does the indie land? We have control over all of that. When we throw streamers, you get to decide where the tippet's gonna go, because that's where the streamer's gonna go next. Uh, really important to have all those options. And with this power uh, and the casting that I'm gonna show you, instead of lobbing, uh, you get a lot more of that accuracy and placement over every part of the system. Anyway, we want to cast these rigs and not lob them because casting is how we utilize that power and lobbing really takes that power away. Here, come on, I'll show you what I mean. So one thing to really understand here is that we can cast this line like a fly line, even without any weights attached. What, I've, what I have here is a trout bitten standard mono rig, but I've replaced the 20 pound Maxima Chameleon with OPST pink, so you can see it. It's not quite as powerful, but boy, you can still cast it. And I'm gonna show you that here. Uh, short transition piece, uh, and then my standard cider. Um, I have attached no tippet and no weight here. And I want to see, I want you to see what you could really do. You can cast it like a fly line if you treat it that way. There's no weight on here, but here I am casting it just like a fly line. I often, well, when I show this to people, they're kind of like, well, kind of surprised, I guess. Uh, but there we are. We're casting it just like a fly line. I will say, I mean, you got to look. I'm hardly working. I'm casting. It's, you need a refined casting skill. You just need good fly casting skills to make this work. Watch, if I slow this down, that's not gonna go anywhere. If I just start to kind of lob, lob things around, if I was just trying to lob weights around once I put the flies on, you can see I'm, there's no leader performance there. But as soon as I have good casting fundamentals, crisp stops, 10 o'clock, two o'clock, keeping the elbow down, all the good stuff, speed in between two points and crisp stops, it's casting just like a fly line. Now, when I'm nymphing or when I'm fishing streamers, when I have weights on the end, I'm not going to stand here and do a bunch of false casting. But, it's a, but doing this with what, whatever leader you're choosing for a mono rig, doing this helps you really understand the performance of the tool in your hand. That leader is powerful enough to push things to a target. I could put a size 18 pheasant tail on there and push it to a target. Uh, any, with very little weight, I can effectively fish uh, this mono rig uh, in many different ways. I can also fish it with plenty of weight on there. So another thing to really understand here, I, I focus a lot on turnover. You want the, the fly line style loops here to turn over all the way 
And then, once you have weight on, you're actually gonna tuck the fly down in. Um, we can do this turnover and this tuck even without any weight on. You're seeing there, the loop is unfolding and the cider is tucking down in. The cider hits before the line does. All right, again, this is without any weight on there. It's just the leader pushing itself around. So time after time, I'm able to cast and tuck it in, even without the weight on. We have the performance here, the power built into this leader to do a lot of work for us. All right, so I put a size 14 beaded pheasant tail on there. That catches everything every day. Did you know that? Um, <laughs> so uh, now the cast changes a little bit. Um, the cast doesn't change so much, but the timing does. Which I'm going to come back, I'm going to cast, I wait, and then it goes forward. What I'm waiting for is the tug uh, on the rod tip. I can feel it, and then I go forward. Great, and I also feel it on the forward cast. It tugs, so it reaches the end of the line, tucks down in. That's really what we want. We want this to arc in. We don't want to lay it in. So again, this is a cast. Good. Let's say I'm drifting through, drifting through, drifting through. Back cast, forward cast, right? And I feel the weight before I go forward. I feel it, boom, and then I go forward. So those are casts. That's what I mean by casting this system, right? And here is a lob. I'll call this a lob when I go like this. And there's almost no energy going in. And I can make it work. I can get to where I want to. But there, I lobbed it in, and I have to pick my line up. There's another lob. Let's say it gets past me. I kind of lob the weights forward. Not good. Here's another cast. Back stop, forward stop. I feel that tug on my rod tip. That's what you want to feel. That's a key point. Right there, I feel the tug, and then I go forward. I also feel the tug on the forward cast, and the nymph tucks down in. So here's the importance of casting versus lobbing. You want a fly first entry. That does not mean it's tucked down in uh, super steep with a whole bunch of slack. No, no, no. But as long as we have a fly first entry, and we have a casting style, and we have a lot more control over the way we're going to place things. This is casting, and this ends up to be lobbing. I'm talking about, you know, that's the fly, and here's the tippet. We don't want to lob the tippet in. We want to cast it in. So we have control over all of this instead of laying this down on the water and then picking it back up. Something to think about. Casting really is the key to this mono rig style. By casting, we have that fly line style performance. We can push things around and land everything where we, where we want and how we want, not just the flies. So we get a fly line casting style with a tight line advantage. That's the thing. Hope that helps. Fish hard, friends. You say action, it makes me feel professional. Come on, darling. Blah, 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 turnover.